Ladies and gentlemen, we are down to only 16 fighters in our PS4 tournament, and we have a great battle here between Sliverine Killer going up against Ed Parker. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you listening? Ricky J. Sparks. Ladies and gentlemen, we are only down to 16 PS4 UFC virtual fighters. And I am pumped up today for this showdown between Ed Parker and Sliverine Killer. And both of these guys are unbelievable. And let's see what happens. Who's going to punch their ticket into the big final eight? And we have Ed Parker using Jose Aldo. And I love how Sliverine Killer is using Zabit. And let's see how Ed Parker is going to deal with Zabit's crazy little takedown. It's that schoolyard takedown <laughs> in Canada when it's snowing out. Back in the day, man, all these little kids would always pretend they were Hulk Hogan versus Macho Man and go for those silly Zabit takedowns. And it's crazy how they've implemented into the UFC game. <laughs> but um, we haven't really seen Ed Parker's grappling game so this will be interesting to see and remember to note ed parker loves being a southpaw oh wow that is an ultimate telltale right there people if ed parker could easily deny sliverine's little schoolyard takedown could he get oh and he denies the ankle pick as well wow fast hands for ed parker to be able to see that while you're playing and react is incredible, man. You got to see it right away. Look at this. How is Ed Parker... What the... Is he a mind reader? I'm going to call him the psychic Ed Parker. He's got a bunch of nicknames. Sensei Belly Tickle and Psychic Parker, man. How is he predicting that? Because it's almost like you got to pre-deny it. And Sliverine is known to be an amazing grappler. And if he can't grapple at this point or throughout the course of this fight, he's going to have a tough time against Ed Parker. Ed Parker, man, he's arguably the best stand-up fighter in this game. Let me know if he's ever faced kinetic energy. Because that would be an epic battle. But they're on two different systems. so It's kind of like... Um, Sonic versus Super Mario. <laughs> you could actually have that face off in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, by the way. But right here at this point, Ed Parker is utilizing his dynamic ability and reaction time right here. And he's jacked up Sliverine's legs. And Sliverine finally gets the clinch. Ed doing some fakes and he's gaining. If you see in the middle, top middle of the screen, he's gaining that grappling advantage by striking here in some nice little over-under. But a lot of fakes, a lot of high-level stuff. Oh, a little Marco Ruas foot stomps <laughs> for all you hardcore UFC fans from back in the day. But Sliverine is doing his fakes. It just seems like Ed Parker is just kind of beating him to the punch he's beating him to the punch and stifling the dynamic grappling ability of Sliverine killer and that round definitely went to Ed Parker it's really nice when you could sit back like this and watch two high-level players duke it out man oh Sliverine's like I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to touch gloves with you man after you stifled my grappling attempts and his leg is jacked, and he's kind of desperate at this point, looking to get that takedown. It's kind of nice when you when you use the beat. You go, you do a nice little one-two, and then go for the takedown. See right there, right there. Wow! And he still got stopped. I can't believe I predicted that. And for all you guys out there, I don't watch the fight. I before I record I always like to do it live because it's better when you're seeing things for the first time and for all you guys that are still in the ps4 tournament don't tell me who wins if you're selling if you're setting sending me footage man I can't talk I'm so excited because I love that element of surprise oh so right now Sliverino oh, for for a second I was gonna say he's 
mounting his first grappling offense so far in this fight. But look at these fakes that Parker's doing. And they're both denying each other's transitions, man. This is like a stalemate at this point. And for me personally, when I get into that point, sometimes I panic and try to do a little too much. So it's good to learn from these guys. Oh, Sliverane's got a chance. Oh, good block on, on Ed's part. And both of them are <laughs> playing footsies, trying to go for that. They're actually faking that outside trip. A lot of guys love to fake that trip and then go for the knee to the body. Man, that's a lot of um, of those high-level guys are doing. But this is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a guy deny Zabit's takedown. I've seen them deny a couple, but to deny all of them is pretty impressive. And for all you guys that were watching Ed Parker's fights before this, you would think the ultimate game plan or the ultimate kryptonite to Ed Parker's game would be a Zabit build. Somebody who's able to clinch, take him down. But Ed Parker saying, I am good in all avenues. He kind of reminds me of, uh, this is uh, old school from the 80s, but oh, he's got him rocked. He's got him rocked. Oh, he's got him knocked down. Hold on, I'll get to that point in a minute. Sliverine is hanging by a thread right here. But I'll tell you real quick, guys, that it, Parker reminds me of Lionel from Thundercats for one of the episodes where he, in order to be the ultimate Thundercat leader, he was put to the test against everybody and against all of their strengths. So remember Chitara? She was the um, fast cheetah girl that was the fastest runner. So he had to battle her in a race. And everybody counted him out saying, oh, you know, Lionel's only good at certain things, but he's not f as fast as Chitara. But it was a long distance race. And that was the best episode. I got shivers. I have shivers right now just talking about it. And Lionel, um, he came back in the race and beat her because he had the endurance and beat her in her um, in her strength. So it looks like Ed Parker is taking Sliverine, the ultimate grappler, and basically stifling him in his element, if you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, <laughs> nice little 80s reference. But if you haven't seen that episode of Thundercats, you got to see it where Lionel took out Chitara in that race, man. Oh my gosh, gives me shivers just thinking about it. But back to the fight, you got Ed Parker just doing a great job of implementing his game plan and obviously, like I said, denying any offense. Oh, and still, nothing for Sliverine on the offensive zone. He's trying though, people. He is trying. He's doing some fakes. He may be looking to set up a nice little triangle action. Or he may be trying... I don't think he would want to try to get up here, though. Because Sliverine, this is his realm. Ed Parker passes. And most guys are avoiding the mount and just posturing up. Oh, he opens it up. Opens those legs up. Right here, Ed Parker's just being patient. Scoring points. He's no, He knows he's up. And if he could win this round, he could just basically coast for the rest of this five-round fight. So this is very important. It's a key part of this fight right here for Ed Parker to finish strong and not to you know take any damage and at this point he hasn't been taking any damage he has great stamina he's got a dominant position right here in side control and sliverine is being patient he's doing a good job though not taking heavy damage while he's on his back but now we've got some side saddle action for ed parker kind of just very calculated in his strikes, very calculated in his movements on the mat. You know, you don't want to be wild, man. You don't want to be doing silly things to be flashy for the camera 
or try to or try or to try to end the fight early when you know that finish is not there so he's just being patient stay sticking to the game plan and this is like i said in the beginning of this video it's really cool that we're seeing a different element of ed parker because when i think of ed parker i think of you know a bulldozer just taking you out within the first two minutes of a fight but we have not yet seen an Ed Parker that's showing you denials, clinch game, ground game, stand-up game. So this is cool, man, to see him eat up some octagon time, to see him sweat. But you can't count out, can't count out Sliverine Killer. You just can't. I'm telling you, this guy's a beast. All it takes a couple denials and a nice little choke, it could be over. Oh, that leg. And I don't know Zabit's health stats, but holy smokes. He got kicked in that leg early in that third round, and now, man, he gets kicked again like five minutes later, and he's showing a health event. So nice. It's nice to see Ed Parker getting up. Oh, he's jacking up that leg. Slivery, nice. I was going to say, he's got to switch stands and work in Southpaw. And for all you guys, man, I'm not the greatest when it comes to working in Southpaw. Great little trip. So I think right here, Slivery's got to take some chances. You know, he's down on the scorecards. He's not going to win the fight if it goes to a decision. So what I would be doing at this point, I know I'm not one to give him advice, but I would be trying to roll the dice and take some chances. Nice. Nice little reversal. But you got to finish the fight. He has to finish this battle. He's not going to win on the judges' scorecards. He's got to be looking at it. I like what he's doing. He's trying to fake. He's trying to transition. Oh, but Parker gets his back. And this is a tough little spot to deny your opponent's transitions because guys are really, you know, they are really, they're not really moving their arms, man. It's, you can't really see which way they're going. But Parker denying. This gets his back. Let me, I want to see if maybe he's going to flatten him out and try to unload. Oh, gets the mount. And you see a lot of these high-level guys that aren't unloading the tank when they get to mount. And we're all learning as we're watching this. Oh, nice reversal. <laughs> Let's see. He's got a minute and change to work. He gets the mount. Oh. See, a lot of guys are denying that. You see that? And look at Sliverine. Could we have a... Oh, nice. He's got time to work. And he's going to be unloading the tank here. And as I said, people, you can't count out these high-level guys. And how do you do that? Please let me know in the comment section. How do you shake guys off like that? Because, oh my gosh, it's over like that. And I was going to say, that move where Parker kind of bucked him off like that enabled him to get to the feet and then he finished the fight. If he didn't do that move, he would have still been messing around on the mat. So let me know if you guys know how to do that move where you're shaking your opponent off of you like that. And what a crazy battle. It looked like Ed Parker was in trouble and he immediately, like Sliverine was denying him in the mount position and then... Parker snuck out of it and then finished the fight. What an unbelievable fight, man. And respect to both of these guys. Both of these guys could easily be in the finals of any tournament. So it's kind of unfortunate that they're facing off in the round of 16. But you know what? That's just how it goes, man. That's how it goes in these tournaments where you're just going to bump into an elite fighter. Especially when you reach the round of 16. So... Here we go. We are on to the second fight. Let's see if Sliverine can try to 
come up with something in order to get Ed Parker frustrated in order to plant that seed of doubt. So we are doing a mirror match, and I know a lot of you guys don't like the mirror match, but this showcases who's just a better fighter, if you know what I mean. Because there's no advantage or disadvantage. It's all equal. And some takeaways for Sliverine. He's got a grapple. He's an unbelievable grappler. But I wouldn't be messing around on the feet. Good job, man. And this guy's a champ, man. He knows what's up. He knows where he excels. And look at that. Oh. And this is another position to take some time. I, I like to use two controllers to learn. But it's a great opportunity to learn how to deny and in which direction. When you go into the UFC gym, use two controllers and try to figure out which way to deny in that position, especially these new positions that are showcased after the patch. So right here, Sliverine couldn't have asked for a better start in my opinion. And Ed Parker getting into full guard. Good denial. Ooh. Wow. Jumps right into stack, but then doesn't like it and goes into half guard. Now into side control. Let's see if he goes for crucifix. He may just want to camp here and he can get it here. But he would love to drain that stamina. See, and Parker, he's just kind of faking it. And oh, he goes with the advanced get up and gets it. And you know, you're probably thinking at home, man, when I try that, that never works. How come it works for Ed Parker? I don't know. Message Ed Parker. But he's doing some fakes. He's gaining the grappling advantage, and then he's picking his spots to get up. And this is where he is just seems to be at another level when it comes to the stand-up game. And I think he's kind of have he kind of has that Anderson Silva stigma to him is like when you face him on the feet you kind of you're nervous you're shell-shocked a little bit because you know he could hurt you in a heartbeat but if i'm in sliverine shoes right now i want to send out that smoke screen pretend that i want to strike and then try to get this fight back down to the ground what an even round, man. And the, Yeah, to the ground or to the clinch. Wow. See how Parker, he faked one way and then, oh my gosh. You don't see a lot of guys doing that. Especially when they, when they get into a position like that. You don't see a lot of guys fake, to, fake one direction and then go the other way. They, they tend to panic, especially... When they're facing a guy like a slivering killer. But what a great little round. I think I still... I don't know, man. I was going to say I, I would give it to Ed Parker, but judging by these replays, the computer thinks otherwise. Very even round. And that's what we want to see, man. We want to see some competition. And you guys know FCB... In his last broadcasted fight, he was saying, Ricky, call me when there's competition. So, FCB, I'm calling you right now. <laughs> there's competition right here. So, let's see if Sliverine can continue utilizing GSP strengths. And that is throwing a mixed bag of mixed martial arts at Ed Parker. And you know what Ed Parker wants to do. He wants to keep it on the feet and tear you up. Nice little combo by Sliverine. See, see how he had the clinch? And then he pulled him off it. Did you guys notice that? He kind of had the clinch and then Ed said, you know what, I don't want to slow dance. And that new clinch animation, it's crazy. I don't know if I'm a big fan of it, to be honest. It's so hard to deny. See that? He had it, and then he pushed him off. But 
You know what I would love to see? I would love to see a slivering killer in Ed Parker controller cam. Just to see the quickness of their fingers and <laughs> the quickness of their thumbs, man. <laughs> Especially when they're denying transitions. It's amazing. But right here, you know, this is pretty much a stalemate on the feet. Parker seems to be landing a little bit more. There he goes. Doubles up on that leg kick. No, sorry, on that body kick. Oh, he had it deep on that takedown attempt. And Parker says no way. Using that GSP strength. GSP was always so good at denying guys deep into takedowns. Ask Sean Shirk. Ask Matt Hughes, man. Matt Hughes tried to take him down. I believe it was UFC 65 or or their third fight. And then it was like Matt Hughes like ran into a wall, which was GSP's chest. Whoa. Parker's hurt. Parker's hurt, but he's doing a good job backing away. And just an update on the stamina situation. Oh, he's hurt again. Parker has the advantage. And good job on Sliverine Killer. And you could argue at this point, Sliverine is winning this fight. But is he going to be able? All these questions, man. Is he going to be able to keep that pace up? Especially being at a stamina disadvantage. But at this point... He just needs to win one more round, maybe. You could argue about that first round, but let's just say if Sliverine got that first round, he's won this second round. Parker showing respect. If he could somehow win this third round and then play it safe the next two rounds, he could win three rounds to two. But the thing is, Ed Parker is known to be that pressure fighter. I don't know if Ed Parker is going to let him jog around the octagon for two rounds. But this is going to be crucial for Sliverine if he can win this round. Somehow, some way, win this round. And you know Ed Parker's head, people. His head is not 100%. He got rocked a couple times. So here we go, the third round. Two amazing athletes going at it. Two amazing virtual fighters. And this is where champions are made. Both of these guys have that ability. Isn't that how it is, these top guys? Have the ability to overcome adversity. Have the ability to perform when the pressure meter is at its peak. <laughs> Not like some of us guys that when the pressure meter is at its peak, we fold. Do you ever get some point sometimes when you're playing this game and you're in a battle for some reason? And you guys are going to think this is crazy, but for like three seconds, I forget the controls of the game. <laughs> when I'm playing the game and I'm in a battle, I'm like, how do I play this game? And then all of a sudden I clue in and I figure it out again. But I have like a mind lapse. So right here, Ed Parker stuns him. And at this point, Ed Parker is off. If this was a race, he's off to an early lead in this round. And you know Parker, being the competitor that he is, is not happy that Sliverine took that second round. Because Ed Parker has had a clean sheet throughout this tournament. Undefeated. And he's looking to keep that streak alive. And he's flattened him out. And you see how he didn't throw when he had him flattened out right there. I think he wanted Sliverine to kind of burn some stamina to get to a, a neutral position right there. And that's smart. And again, I, I'm comparing the pros to the amateurs. A lot of the, uh, you know, the casual gamers would unload, including myself. I would unload if I had a guy flattened out and go for it. And Parker is looking for the bigger picture. He's looking to win the round. He's looking to get Sliverine stamina down. And then he's going to look for that opportunity. When Sliverine's stamina is low. When he's sucking air like Logan Paul. <laughs> I love that fight, man, by the way. I'm not going to talk about it too much. But that KSI Logan Paul fight, that was the best 10 bucks I've ever spent, man. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard watching a paid event. But... um. 
Yeah, Logan Paul was doing well, man. If he can get his conditioning up, I have him winning that rematch. Well, yeah, that's what Parker wants to do at this point. He wants to drain the stamina of Sliverin. Tries the crucifix, doesn't get it. And the crucifix for me, if I guess the one transition that my opponent's going, I can see their transition after and deny it and then just finish them off with elbows in that position. And this round... I know some of you guys, a lot of you guys were hoping for Sliverine to win that third round, but Ed Parker says, no, the Sliverine parade is not happening. I'm going to put a stop to this run that he's had. And he basically won that third round. So in my opinion, if I had to put the old Eddie Bravo hat on right now, I have it two rounds to one for Sliverine Killer. And... You know, momentum is definitely on Ed Parker's side, but if Sliverine could just find a way. You know what I'm finding, though, when I'm playing this game and watching all you guys fight? If you could just stun your opponent once or knock them down, you could jog, jog around the octagon for the whole round and you'll win the round. So if Sliverine could stun Ed somehow, rock him, and then keep him on the mat and keep it in a neutral kind of fighting element he'll win this round and that will give him three rounds to one according to my scorecards but it just seems like ed parker is oh i was gonna say he's warming up and look at him he's got him hurt could it be over no remember how we were saying when you stun a guy you knock a guy down due to body strikes a lot of guys are going for submissions but parker doesn't want to deal with that because i think he he's also maybe worrying about if he doesn't get that submission he's going to be in a bad spot so he's still in a dominant position but he's in stack and this position man could be one of the toughest positions to get out of especially when you're dealing with a grappling gorilla like the sliverine killer Oh, nice little reversal right there. Oh, but Parker gets back into full guard. And this is nice to see, man. It's nice to see a different element of Ed Parker's game right here. But Sliverine's in a good spot. If he could keep it here, if he could deny some transitions and land some heavy strikes and maybe try to go for a submission I still think he's losing this round oh nice denial and here's another position that it's always good to go to the UFC gym to figure out people's movements in that position and all these pro players man these ESFL fighters just know every transition block man to every animation in this game and for me, I'm still struggling in certain positions. Like when your opponent's got your back standing up like that. And then when your opponent has your back when you're on the mat. Oh my gosh. So much to learn. It's all about practice. But Sliverine is not going away quietly. And this is good for him. But based on the... Oh, that's surprising that he got that. I think Sliverine was trying to pre-deny a different transition. But judging by the UFC 3 <laughs> judges, they are going to give that round to Ed Parker, especially because he rocked him. And even though Sliverine did well in certain positions, Parker did rock him. So right now, whoever wins this round wins the fight, in my opinion. But if you're a Sliverine fan, look at him. He's already walking gingerly. He just looks like he's out of it. And he's kind of moving around. He's going to take some chances here, I think, on the feet. Oh, and his stomach is just all beat up. And Parker denies him. I, I was going to say he's going to go for crucifix. And this is where 
If he denies this transition, yeah, it's pretty much a wrap right here. Because once you deny one transition, you get that grappling advantage. And then you're able to easily deny the transitions at this point. Maybe Slivereen will try an arm trap on a strike. Oh, Parks is going for a submission. And remember, I don't know if you guys saw my easy <laughs> secret submission escape video. But this would come in handy right here. And I don't know if Parker's going to get it. He needs two more gates. And it could be over. One more gate. Could Parker silence the critics and showcase? Oh my gosh. It looked like Sliverine tapped. I got to rewind and check that out again. But it looked like Sliverine tapped. But he got out of it. And now he's got Crucifix. And he's got a chance. Parker is... Oh, see how he arm trapped him right there. That takes a lot of skill. But I was going to say Parker was in big trouble right there if he didn't arm trap. And what a crazy turn of events. You thought Parker was going to get that submission victory. Sliverine somehow looked like he tapped, but he got out of it. And then he had him in a dominant position. And then Parker arm trapped him while at the bottom in Crucifix. This is high level stuff. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Hopefully you're still sticking around at 30 plus minutes into this video. And I think Parker, I don't know man, I don't think Parker can coast right here. It's too close. It's way too close and he's got the stamina advantage. What? Mario Yamasaki stood them up just like that. They were working. This is called MMA. Terrible get up right there and this is not good for our good buddy Sliverine oh and down he goes and looks like this fight could be done Parker going for that armbar <laughs> he's trying to show the real GSP that he is dynamic and he gets it gets the submission silences all the critics that he is a mixed martial artist he's not just a stand-up fighter what an unbelievable battle. It could have gone both ways, man. If Parker didn't showcase that ability to grab that arm, to arm trap in Crucifix, it could have gone Sliverine's way. But we got to give, I'm going to give a much respect to Sliverine Killer for hanging in there, for going almost the distance with Ed Parker twice, man. But respect goes out to you. And obviously, respect goes to Ed Parker, who is now reaching the final eight man this is crazy this is crazy hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts on both of these amazing competitors and i'll catch you in the next one this is ricky j baby from ricky j sports and you are awesome